Numerical Computation, Chapter 4, Video 6. We now look at error estimate for Simpson's rule. So, um, the same procedure as we did for trapezoid rule, the error estimate starts from checking the error on each subinterval when you approximate the function by a polynomial and approximate the integral of the function by the integral of the polynomial. So these are called the basic error. So for Simpson's rule, using quadratic polynomial, interpolating the two endpoints and the one midpoint, and the basic error for that little integral is exactly the following. So an error for Simpson's rule on interval number i for function f with the grid size h equals to negative 1 over 90 h to the fifth f to the fourth derivative at some cosi i where cosi i is some number lies on the interval between x to i to x to i plus 2. Okay, so the proof, exact proof to arrive to this very powerful estimate is pretty lengthy, so if you are curious about how this is being worked out, you can check either the lecture notes or the textbook. It's nothing hard, but it just takes a long time, okay? So here we will start from this basic arrow and then use that to derive the total arrow and find the order of the method. So as we know, what is the total arrow? The total arrow, denoted by ES, as stands for Simpson's rule, is the integral of f over ab minus this s, which is the sum over all the s's. So this will exactly be the sum over all the basic arrows over each interval. So we're basically summing up i from 0 to n minus 1, all the intervals of this arrow. And we see that um, 1 over 90, h to the fifth, is just a constant. So we can take it out, and uh, we just have to sum over this f fourth derivative at cosi i. And now we do a same trick as we did earlier. We multiply this with this number, which basically equals to 1. We see that. So we've done it before. So um, b minus a over 2h exactly equals to n. So this is just 1. And if you do that, and then um, we can also um, make the same trick as we did. And that is, we would uh, group the 1 over n. Let's see. Let me try to put a bracket. Group this together with the sum over all the fourth derivatives. And we see that in that bracket, it's actually some average value of f fourth derivative, so there shall exist some cosi, some cosi lies on the interval from x0 to x to n, such that this average value just equal to f to the fourth derivative of cosi, okay? And uh, we can also cancel out an h here, you cancel this out with, with this 5, this 5 changes into power 4, and you combine the 2 with 90, and then you end up with the negative b minus a over 180, and now h to the power 4 times f fourth derivative psi. Okay? And then this is the error estimate, and based on the error estimate, we can have the error bound, that is the absolute value of the error, and we want to find something that bounds it. So since we don't really know where the cosi is, and we could uh, substitute this by the maximum value of the fourth derivative on the interval from a to b. Okay, This is kind of the inf norm here. And since we take absolute value, then we get rid of the negative sign, and this becomes the error bound. Okay, so um, take a close look at the error bound. What do we have here? So that's a constant, and this is a constant. So the important number in this error bound is actually the exponent on top of h, so h to the power 4, right? So this would actually give me a fourth order method. So this is very, very, very powerful fourth order. And so next we'll see an example and see exactly how powerful that fourth order will be. 
Okay, let's consider the example, and this is similar to the example number two we had for trapezoid rule. So we want to integrate e to the x on the interval from zero to two. Now use Simpson's rule. Okay, and uh, we require also an arrow less than zero point five times ten to the negative four. And now we ask the question: How many points at least must we take to guarantee that? So if you remember. We did the same thing by using the trapezoid rule, right? And we found out that we need to use about 314 points. Okay, let's see how Simpson's rule would uh, fare. Okay, so the arrow estimate we just had for the Simpson's rule. And um, what we put in here is the fourth derivative of f, which is ex, and the max value on 0, 2 is just e squared. Okay, so we have this, this arrow bound now must be bounded by the requirement. Then it will, it will be guaranteed that the arrow is less than the requirement. Okay, and so basically we just have to solve this inequality. Okay, keeping h to the fourth on the left-hand side and move the other terms to the right-hand side of the inequality, we found out that h to the fourth shall be less than this number here divided by this number and divided by th this number, okay? And the computation shows that that's 1.21 1 times 10 to the negative 3. And then let's take the fourth root, and then we find out h has to be less than 0 0.18, something like that. And now remember um, the relationship between h and n, so we know n exactly equal to b minus a over 2h, right? So putting the h value you just found here, and you find out that n shall be approximately equal to 6. But be careful, so this is n is the number of subintervals, is not the number of points. Remember, on each subinterval, in the middle, there's an additional point. Okay, so the total number of points in the end will become 2n plus 1, which is 13 points. So we see um, comparing 13 points to um, the trapezoid rule, which we would have to use 314 points. We see that the Simpson's rule is far more superior. You only take 13 points, you only need to do 13 function evaluations versus 314 function evaluations, the CPU time is totally different. Hopefully, um, this um, example convinces you of the power of a higher order method. So if one can apply a higher order method, then we should do that. We should also maybe um, notice that this error estimate would work under the assumption that the function f shall be in C4. That means you can differentiate it four times and still get a bounded function. So if your function f does not have such strong regularity, then the estimate will not be so strong. So just keep that in mind. Okay, and then and beyond this, next time we will look at something called a composite rule. Okay, so see you next time.